Welcome, traveler. It's been many moons since last we met by the fire's light. Now where did we leave off? Ah, yes. Kalim and Shara ventured deep into the jungle ruins of Maris in search of an ancient relic for Shara's elder brother, Saiga. Yet the relic tower was guarded by a fierce wood elemental, and Kalim was faced with a difficult choice. Kill the fey creature at Shara's behest and claim its powerful essence, or trust in a grove goller's plea to spare its life in exchange for a talisman of sylvan strength. After a moment's hesitation, Kalim made his choice, and now two legends venture back into the jungle. Kalim's foot was stuck. Again. Gah! Shara, would you please just help me out? These damnable roots have ensnared my ankle. Why not ask your new talisman for help? Didn't that tribal guy say it would respond to love in a moment of despair? You love your ankle, right? I'm sure it'll work. I'll just wait here. Go ahead. Call on its power. Uh, look, Shar, I have the relic your brother asked for. That's all we needed. I told you to kill it, Sandboy. This jungle would suffer for its loss. And what will happen when we face Solom? And you hesitate again. Kalim paused in his struggle and met Shara's glare with a faint glow to his eyes. I will not falter. <sighs> Fine. Shara danced deftly over the snarling roots of the jungle floor to reach Kalim. As she knelt to free his leg, Kalim caught another floral scent from her hair and the warmth of the midday sun. Thank you, Shara. There. Now, let's get back to my brother. I've gone far enough. There's no reason to deliver the relic myself. Here. Kalim reached out and placed the relic in Shara's hand. She tensed at his touch, but then... Let him fold the relic into her palm. I'll fly back to Mirzam and prepare for battle. And how will I get there? Spare a moment to teach me to fly? Ha! <laughs> Most of my disciples take years just to hover. But you... Well, you probably would fly on your first day. Just yell at the ground until it throws you up. A joke, Sandboy? Well, fair attempt. So, how am I supposed to get there? With this. Kalim reached to his side for a small pouch, loosened the strap and thrust it toward Shara. The sun was setting and a stray beam made the contents glisten. Sand? This sand is special, though its story is not for the ears of outsiders. Listen closely. Keep this pouch near you at all times. Tomorrow, around this twilight hour, I will make this pouch glow and the sand swirl inside. That will be my warning to prepare yourself for battle. Find a place to sit or kneel in peace, then open the pouch and spill the sands in a circle around it. Soon after, the sands will guide you to my side. I will be facing Solom then, and I hope to use your surprise arrival to our advantage. The sands will guide me? Yes. In but an instant, you will travel to my homeland. It is perfectly safe. Huh. Neat trick. Ugh, it's not a trick, Dragon Slayer. It's an ancient technique that... Ugh, just... Please, be ready, Shara. I'll take you to Azurai after Solon is subdued. Until then, Sands guide you. Twilight, on the morrow. I'll be ready. Kalim breathed in deeply and his eyes took on their azure glow as he ascended into the sky. He cut a striking figure in this golden hour and Shara wondered... No, she would not wonder. As he smiled down and waved her farewell, she turned and stalked away without a backward glance. Kalim felt exhausted when at last he descended from the dawn sky and marched across mosaic tiles to Iona's terrace. Rest, Kalim. Though you will deny it, you are weary from your travels and must sleep now. We will speak of the task ahead when the midday sun begins to fall. Until then. And so Kalim slept, though he could not recall his dreams. Only feelings lingered. The sun's warmth on silver hair, the scent of flowers, and a glint of amusement in the steel blue eyes of a dragon slayer. He awoke well rested, 
and set out to meet Iona. My lady. You appear confident, Kaleem, and eager. May I assume you convinced Shara to lend her blade to our cause? Indeed, though it was a struggle. Oh? I've heard tales of her ferocity and a certain savage beauty. Are the rumors true? Uh, well, I, I believe she will prove her worth against Solon. Hmm. I suppose that is all that matters in this dark hour. Your timing is fortuitous. Solemn has been spotted at twilight near the outskirts of Dagdana. Always at twilight. Their feria, well, is secure, though I fear their defenses cannot withstand Solemn's wrath. He will strike soon. Then I will depart immediately. Sans guide you, Kaleem. And you, Iona. The sylvan talisman weighed cold and heavy on Kaleem's chest as he soared across the darkening desert sky. As he passed Barren Sky Ridge, Kaleem reached to the pouch of shift sand at his side, releasing a faint pulse of feria from his palm. Somewhere, near the distant ruins of Maris, Shara would feel his call. Kaleem's hand drifted back to the talisman, which now radiated a comforting warmth. What an odd trinket, thought Kaleem, just as Zegdana came into view. Something was odd. No wind soldiers at the eastern outpost the outer market dark, and from the direction of the fairy well, smoke. Master Kalim, sans bless your arrival. Solom was here not more than an hour past. We rallied our defenses to repel him, though not without heavy damage. He fled towards Howling Pass. Very well. Secure the area and... Ugh! Ah, the Sky Prodigy. So good of you to come and play. Master Kalim, are you alright? Uh, yes, I'm fine. Howling Pass will remain off limits to all until I have smote Solemn this night. But Master, we can aid you in battle. You have a wife at home, don't you, soldier? After the area is secured, go to her and rest. If I don't return by dawn, you may venture out to meet me. Understood, Master. Sands guide you. Howling Pass. For years a bustling trade route through the mountains from Dagdana to Mazer. Yet where gold flows, shadows grow. And before long bandits crept forth from their caves and the pass was stained with the blood of honest oratory. Now this desolate gorge is filled only with the bellowing howls of blightborn specters. Kalim stopped suddenly, as the crisp air gave way to an eerie heaviness. Patches of air seemed to be tearing, faint crackles slipping through as the weight of oblivion bore down on the fabric of the realm. We are not so different, child of Astar. I find that hard to believe. The shadows were lengthening, and it took Kalim a moment to trace the voice to the demonic form lurking nearby. As soon as he met the gaze of those burning eyes, he dropped a hand to his side and sent a faint pulse through his shift sand. The pain of this world, your struggle against the greed and tyranny of Mirnast. I have felt your anger, Kalim, and I share it. Can we not just start anew, you wonder? A world without Varia. Solom's words struck disturbingly close to Kalim's own thoughts. You are a blight upon my desert homeland. Your treacherous words will earn no audience here. Yet you do not strike. Do you know the true blight upon your homeland? Your people rely on it more and more each day. Together with my father, we will free your world of the bounds of Faria. And you, child of Astar, are poised to lead the misguided rabble into our new age. You know nothing, Shadow Spawn. The real blight is in the hearts of men. Faria is a precious resource to be savored and respected. Just as the winds, water, and bounties of the earth sustain us, so too does Faria. <sighs> 
then let it sustain your last breath. Solom stretched his four hands up to the twilight sky and roared as flames surged over his palms. At the same moment, a rush of wind and sand swept across Kalim's back, and he smiled. Four hands, huh? Well, that's new. Shara stepped forward to Kalim's side, and he felt his heart race at the warmth of her presence. Welcome, Shara. Been a while, sand boy. Shara swept her feet quickly through the sand on her foot. You remember the tower? How you made me float on the sand? Let's try that again. All right, Sora, let's do this. Sorl, I am Solom, son of Ostrogoth. Even demons talk too much. Back me up, sand boy. Sands of the Oridrum, guide her steps. Kalim stretched forth his arms and took hold of the sand at Shara's feet, propelling her forward with the speed of the wind. Solom dodged her thrust and retreated to a distance before firing his palm flares in rapid succession. Waves of sand rose up to deflect the missiles as Shara danced atop the dunes, closing in on her prey. She leapt into the night sky, the silver moon glinting off her runic blade, hair wild and aglow with lunar light. <laughs> her blade struck true as Solom gasped and fell to the ground, a dark miasma seeping from his wound. Kaleem lowered Shara softly to the ground beside the fallen shadow spawn. Hardly a challenge. Back to the shadow for- <gasps> A dark wind swept through Shara. Her eyes went wide as her blade fell silently upon the sands and she collapsed in a heap. Shara! Kaleem raced to her side, heart burning with fury. What have you done to her? Solom cackled as he rose slowly to his feet, the dark wind healing his wound. Young souls are always most invigorating. Kaleem dropped to his knees and felt for Shara's faint pulse. Her breathing was shallow and her warmth was fading. No, he would not let it end here. There was so much more to learn of this woman, to feel her warmth, hear the strength in her voice, and that sly smile. A heat burst forth from Kaleem's chest and he reached for... The talisman? It was glowing now, an emerald light. As Kaleem grasped the talisman in his hand, a strength filled his being and a string of shadow vines burst forth, tattooing his body in intricate patterns. Kaleem stood to face the shadow spawn who had defiled his homeland. As the azure glow of Faria surged in Kaleem's eyes, a spear of sand began to take shape within his grasp. A fancy trick, but it will do you no good. I will claim her spirit now. A dark wind rose up around Solom and flames surged once more from his palms. You will not! Kaleem burst forth in a maelstrom of sand, lunging into Solom and knocking him into the stone wall of the gorge. Before Solom could evade, Kaleem's sand spear pierced his chest. Another spear formed by Kaleem's side and he thrust it into Solom's arm. The spears were forming instantly now and Kaleem jabbed each forth to pin the shadow spawn to the wall that would be its grave. A dark miasma spilled forth and the light began to fade from Solom's devilish eyes. I underestimated you, child of Asta. Perhaps now is not the time. Yet soon, yes, it is inevitable. The world will end. And my father will help me free. Kaleem wasted no time on the corpse of a demon and descended to Shara's side as the shadow vines retreated back into the talisman. Shara, can you hear me? Nothing. She felt cold, but stable. It's too dangerous to reach Dagdana this late. We'll have to camp here. Kaleem summoned a cave of sand around them and reached deep into the ground to draw water from the earth. Before long, it began to pool, and Kaleem scooped some up and poured it gently over Shara's lips. She gasped at first, but then began to drink it calmly. Good. I'm sorry, Shara, but I need to keep you warm through the night. He cast his robe across her shivering shoulders and settled down beside her, as sleep claimed them both. Master Kalim? Master Kalim! <laughs> you return. Thank you. Please, take us to Mirzam. Iona, with haste. 
You've been waiting here for hours, Kalim. You should rest. I'll have you called when she awakens. I know, Iona, it's just... You care for her. I do. I'm glad for you, Kalim. You deserve someone who shares your zeal. Thank you, Iona. Know that you are ever welcome here. Together, I'm certain we will guide the Oradrim to a bright future. Now then, I will take my leave. Sands guide you, Kalim. Sands guide you, Grace. The winds of fate weave mysterious patterns indeed. To think I've fallen madly for a wild warrior of the plains, who no doubt plans to slay Azurai, eternal wrath, as soon as she awakens. I want to know so much more about you, Shara. Why do you travel alone? Why did you flinch at my touch in the jungle? Do you ever get lonely on the road? I could travel with you, you know, if you wanted. Kalim yawned deeply and began walking towards the terrace door, exhaustion weighing heavy on his shoulders. Before slipping away, he turned back to glance at Shara. Rest well now, Dragon Slayer, for when you awaken, I might just teach you to fly. As Kalim's steps faded softly into the distance, Shara opened her eyes and let slip a whisper on the winds. You already have, Kalim. I do believe that is a pleasant note to end on. Though no story is ever truly at an end, so long as it lives on in your own mind. Many more adventures await us in the world of Faria. I do hope we'll meet again to share tales of our journeys. Until then, friend, farewell. <laughs>